To my surprise, 9% of voters are currently voting against HIP 58. HIP 58 happens to be one of the simplest proposed solutions to date by the Helium community that is entirely designed to battle gaming. It's interesting to see that this technical change was not already built into the network, but I'm happy it is being voted on and I will certainly be voting in favor. The argument against this HIP is rather hard to make, especially considering the extensive data the authors have provided in the proposal. These changes will Will only impact proof of coverage earnings that are earned from witnessing hotspots over 100 kilometers away. Based on the data, the vast majority of hotspots doing this are currently being gamed, and about a third of those are already on the deny list. Although it is possible for some legitimate witnesses at these distances, there is no current use case for these ranges on the Helium network. It is easy to check how far away your hotspot witnesses are on the Helium Explorer to see if some of your witnesses might be impacted. Let's take a look at all of the details in today's video. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the Crypto Compound channel. Thank you all so much for being here. I hope you guys are having a great day. Please hit that like and subscribe on the way in to stay up to date on the latest Helium and HNT news and analysis. Today's video, we are going to be talking about the current open vote for HIP58, the proof of coverage distance limit here. This, as far as I'm concerned, to me sounds like a no-brainer in terms of a technical update to the network. It is designed to impact and prevent gaming of hotspots for proof of coverage activity that is over 100 kilometers away. Now the vote is currently open and as we can see to my surprise there's actually currently a little bit over 9% of the vote is against this hip. I would have imagined that this hip would have been strongly strongly in favor of being passed maybe 98% and up of b people being in favor of this because it is such a no-brainer in terms of fighting gaming. Anything, any proof of coverage activity that is currently being rewarded over 100 kilometers away is currently described as having no use case on the network. This is because of the reality of the range of LoRaN devices. As we can see here, HIP58 seeks to nullify a certain gaming vector of proof of coverage rewards by aligning the expected range of proof of coverage with with the range of low RAND devices. Now, of course, I have noticed that there are a lot of people that are concerned because they do have some legitimate setups that are experiencing witnesses over 100 kilometers away. Now, these are these are setups that have super clear line of sight that are probably very high in the air with a high DBI antenna. So they are actually legitimately witnessing people or other hotspots that are over 100 kilometers away. But the point of this here and a lot of the data that is provided here in the HIP is all outlined and describes how there is a very, very fringe case of legit witnesses over 100 kilometers away where most of them that are doing that are actually gaming and are already known and are on a deny list. However, the reason some people are upset is because they are part of that fringe minority that have legit setups that are experiencing these witnesses. But as the authors have outlined here, they say, although a helium hotspot may be able to see proof of coverage beacons greater than 100 kilometers away, there are no current use cases at this range for the network. So guys, we're going to be talking about some of the details, some of the examples that people have laid out here in the discord, some of the data provided, the very extensive data here from the authors in the GitHub summary page. Page, and we'll also be talking about how to find out if your witnesses are over or less than 100 kilometers away and if you will be impacted at all. Guys, before we jump in, I just want to make a point here that it looks like the structure of Helium is actually currently failing along with the broader global markets, whether it's crypto or equities. There does seem to be a technical breakdown here for HNT and we are approaching the hard $20 threshold, which I really believe is the last and final support here for HNT. And this will be the fourth or fifth time, depending on which one of these we consider as being tested of this level. And as we know, the more times you test a critical support level, the more likely it is to be broken. So this is a very critical time for HNT, just 57 cents away from the $20 range. However, we will cover this in another tech 
technical analysis video in the next day or so. That being said, HNT is doing relatively well compared to its peers. As we can see, most other peers here are down above 20% over the last seven days. Helium down just 13.7 comparatively, so not horrible. Guys, before we go into some of the details here regarding this hip, I do wanna quickly just explain how to find out if your Helium hotspot has witnesses over 100 kilometers away. This is a very, very simple thing to do here. On the Explorer, I'm just going to a random hotspot here, and if we select it and go to the witnesses on the statistics tab, we can see the total witnesses down here, and if you click on them, you can actually see the kilometers away that each witness is this particular hotspot has 13 witnesses over the last five days. And as we can see, we can see in terms of meters and kilometers, how far away every one of the witnesses are. And as we can see, for the most part, apart from this one lone witness, they are, most of them are very, very close. And even this one that is relative, that is very, very far away and does seem relatively strange it is only 39 kilometers away, so even this witness would not be affected by this HIP58 implementation. But as we can see from the results here, a lot of people are very concerned. 9% of the votes currently are not in favor or against this HIP58 being passed. Now, I want to be very clear. The implementation of this HIP only, only, only will affect proof of coverage rewards. It will not affect data transfers or anything like that. The entire point of this HIP is to align the proof of coverage incentive model with the actual low-ran device coverage, the realistic low-ran device coverage. Anything over 100 kilometers away is not realistic. There is no use case for it on the network, so they are looking to eliminate that reward and in turn also eliminate all of the people that are, that are gaming the network and asserting witnesses at over 100 kilometers in distance. They are calling this implementation a sanity check, which I think it makes total sense and I totally, totally agree with. We have to remember that the point of the Helium network is not to be rewarded in HNT. The point of the network is to provide really good coverage to build a really valuable network and in turn you are rewarded for that coverage. So if we want to build a valuable network and we know that anything over 100 kilometers with regards to proof of coverage is not actually usable in terms of a low RAN device, then I think everyone should agree that anything over 100 kilometers in distance should not in fact be rewarded and that is the point of this hip and what they are trying to do with this vote. This sanity check will put a hard limit on reported distances any proof of coverage witness over 100 kilometers will therefore be considered invalid once this is passed, or I should say if this is passed. Now they go on to explain that there are two expected outcomes from the passing of this hip. The first and foremost is one that is designed to battle gaming. They say the first is that gaming techniques which operate on reported distances above the selected threshold will be made impossible. So anyone trying to game the network with reported distances that are egregious or over 100 kilometers will therefore be invalidated and will earn nothing for that coverage or that reported gaming coverage. And the second outcome is that there will be no measurable reduction in the rewards received by legitimate hotspots, even for exponentially high performers, such as tower deployments. Now, the reason for this is because those witnesses that are over 100 kilometers for those legitimate hotspots have no real sig statistical significance in terms of generating rewards for that hotspot. The large, large majority of rewards for those hotspots come at a threshold less than 100 kilometers in distance. All of that is then outlined here with different diagrams that the authors took the time to really lay out and spell out, which makes a clear picture of how this will have no significant effect on legitimate hotspots. It will only, in turn, really make it impossible for gamers to then assert reported distances of over 100 kilometers and earn rewards for that. Now, one of the most useful examples here that they have provided with regards to the data they've collected before proposing this HIP is this first chart here. They really, they make it clear that the distance limit must be chosen so as to not reduce the rewards for legitimate deployments. This can be seen in the following graph which shows a cumulative histogram of witness distances for a random sample of 10,000 current witness receipts from the blockchain. 
as we can see at a distance of less than 100 kilometers, they have accounted for nearly 100% of the legitimate witnesses from this sample size. Now they go on to elaborate further on different examples and different pieces of data that explain how there is a very, very insignificant amount of legitimate rewards that will be impacted from this hard limit and they explain how most of this er most of these earnings are actually being earned by gaming hotspots. Now Hashcord here in the Discord does provide a very straight to the point explanation of what really is going on. He says proof of coverage activity should continue to reward well-placed hotspots. The current proof of coverage mechanism allows manipulation of witness RF data at long distances and thus we find evidence of gaming at the edges. This improvement implements a sanity check filter on the proof of coverage and reduces the maximum range range of proof of coverage activity to 100 kilometers. He goes on to explain that we arrived at this number by considering that typical devices are able to be heard 30 to 50 kilometers away. We doubled that number to incentivize new hotspot placements. The impact of a few legitimate witness events that are over 100 kilometers is limited as described in the data set in the HIP. So he reiterates the data that is already outlined in the HIP and he explains that there is a lot of cushion here with regards to the 100 kilometer limit that is being proposed in this HIP. Now, as we can see in the Discord, there are a few people who are concerned regarding their hotspot witnesses because they have legit setups and they are currently witnessing other hotspots that are over 100 kilometers away. As we can see here, this person says, take this beacon. It was the last one I sent. Three of the witnesses would fall invalid out of the 14 if this hit passes with no selection change. I get I fall into a small handful of hotspot owners that have these issues, but I would appreciate the community supporting people that go the extra effort. Now, of course, this guy, as he mentioned, he falls into the small minority of hotspot spot owners that have these types of setups. And although they did go and make the extra effort to have that sort of height and the line of sight, Unfortunately, in my opinion, that type of coverage doesn't have that strong of a use case here on the network right now. And we have to remember that the, the primary purpose of the Helium network is not to reward HNT for just providing general proof of coverage. We want to build a sustainable and stable and very valuable and useful network and based on how the actual low RAN devices work and the use cases for them, this type of coverage over 100 kilometers away just has no use case right now. That being said, I do feel for this person because I have gone through the effort of setting up my hotspots as, and optimizing them as much as possible and I know how much effort and time it takes. So I do feel for this person. However, I think we have to agree that the needs of the group here outweigh the needs of the individual and the needs of the group are that we have to really fight gaming. We have to fight gaming as strongly as possible. And this hip with this hard limit really, really helps us do that. And even though some of these witnesses might become invalid after this, I think that is something that we have to give up and we have to sacrifice in order to fight these gamers. And in turn, with these gamers not earning any of this HNT, that would make the pool larger for the rest of us. Guys, let me know what you think. There's a lot of really interesting stuff going on here in the Discord a lot of very, very interesting data that is outlined here by the authors of this HIP. I, as I mentioned, I'm going to be voting in favor of this technical change, and I do feel for the people who will be impacted neg negatively. However, I think the benefit of stopping the gamers far outweighs those the small loss that some legit hotspot owners might experience. But guys, let me know what you think. If you didn't know that this was open right now, please go and vote. Obviously, you can vote however you want. This is just my opinion, and I will be voting in favor, but I'll put a link down below to, to all of what we covered today and go and make sure you vote in whichever direction you feel is correct for the Helium Network. Guys, I hope you found this information valuable. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for watching until the end. Please make sure to hit that like and subscribe if you have not already. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to leave your comments down below. But just like that, this video is over and I'll see you next time.